All right, it's time for the fun part. It's time to start writing some code. To do that though, we're gonna need to create a folder for our code to go in and get our code editor set up and running. Let's start by going into the assets folder. I'm on my project window, go to the assets folder. We'll right click in anywhere the empty space or anywhere in the empty space, choose create and then choose folder. We'll name this folder scripts, S-C-R-I-P-T-S with a capital S there so that it matches the casing of the rest of our project and hit enter. I'll hit enter one more time to go into that folder or just double click on it. Now we have a scripts folder and this is where we're going to keep all of our code. We can move our code pretty much anywhere in the project, but in general, you're gonna find that Unity projects tend to keep their code in a scripts folder or something similar. Scripts is kind of the default that's um, recommended and in a lot of examples, so that's what we stick with. It's what I generally stick with. I used to use some custom ones, bounced all around, and now I just go with the scripts folder. I like that and it works really well. Let's right click now in our scripts folder and create a new script. So we'll choose create, and right up here, right below folder, there's a C sharp script option. I'm gonna click on it and be very, very careful not to hit anything else. I'll get a new script down there that's named new behavior and it's right now in renaming mode. I don't wanna hit anything until I've renamed this script. I'm gonna rename it to player with a capital P. So hold shift P and then lowercase L-A-Y-E-R and now I've got a player script. I'll hit enter and it's going to actually generate that script. Now the reason that I wanted to be very careful about that is because if you look over here at this script in the inspector, which is not where we'll normally look at scripts, but gives you a nice little preview, it has this part right here where it says public class player. And if I had hit the enter button before and then went back and tried to rename this or something, this would be named whatever the file was when it first went in. So it would have been that, uh, new behavior, or I forget what it was called. I think it was new behavior instead of player. And I want this to be player. So now I've got my script here and it's time to work with it and start writing some code. To do that, we're gonna need to open up our code editor. And the code editor that's installed by default with Unity and Windows is Visual Studio Community. And you get Visual Studio Code on a Mac. Now, I prefer JetBrains Writer. We'll talk about that code editor a little bit later. I don't wanna confuse things though. So for now, we're just gonna to go to Assets and go to Open C Sharp Project. This should open up Visual Studio and you'll probably get a window that looks something like this if you've never opened up Visual Studio before. First time in, you're gonna get this What's New window. I'm gonna close that, expand out this assembly part, expand out Assets and Scripts until I can see my player script. I click on it and double click it and it should pop right up here and show me my player class. Let's zoom in by holding control and using the mouse wheel. So I hold control and mouse wheel to zoom in or uh, there's a drop down somewhere around here that you can use. Ah, bottom left corner, it moves around. It's at 214% right now. So now that I'm zoomed in, I can see my script nice and large and there's a lot of stuff going on here if you've never written code before. If you're the first time seeing code, first time writing code, it can be a little bit overwhelming, but don't worry, it's gonna get all very simple and make a lot of sense relatively soon. So the first thing that I wanna call out is this class name. Right here on line five, we have the word public class player. This is the name of our script. This is the thing that we've named it when we created the script and it's the thing that's gonna show up as our component name when we add it to our actual player game object or that alien that we've created. So this is important that it matches exactly with the file name. If we change the file name or we change this little bit of code here, I add in a K here in the middle of it, we're gonna get errors, everything's gonna break. It has to match, it's kind of a, weird Unity thing and it's not something that most coding systems require, but with Unity it's very important that our components that we're going to add are our scripts that we create by hitting that right click and create new script that the file name matches the class name. So the next part that we have is a colon and the word mono behavior. Now this actually means that our player script or our player class is going to what we call inherit from the mono behavior class. That means that it's going to get some abilities and some stuff that it can do 
because of that. It's essentially going to get some of all of the abilities that a mono behavior class has and make them available to our player class. You don't need to know what all of those are, but we will talk about what some of them are. It essentially makes it so that our player class does a lot of things for us automatically, and we don't have to write code to do all of the things that a game engine would do for us. It kind of gives us ways to tie into all of the different things that we would care about, like when we've hit something, when the player has pressed a button, or when every frame has happened. In fact, that's what this is right here. On line 13, you'll see what we have is a comment. You can tell it's a comment because it has two forward slashes and it's colored green. And a comment is just code that doesn't actually run. It's not really code, it's like notes in the code just for humans. This comment says that update is called once per frame, which means that this method here on line 14, which says void update, it means that void means that it doesn't return anything. We'll talk about that in a bit. For now, just know that that's the kind of the default thing you're gonna see in front of a method. And then we have the name of the method, update. So this update method gets called once per frame. So if we have something that we want to happen every single frame of our game, we can just write that right into this update method. So let's do something here. Let's write a little message that uh, will log something out to our console every single frame. To do that, I'll go to line 16. So right here in between 15 and 17, click. And I'll type debug with a capital D dot log with a capital L, and I'll do an open parenthesis that's shift and number nine, and then quotation marks, and we'll say updated at, and then I'm gonna put a space, and watch this, we're gonna do something a little bit complicated. After the quotation mark, so I moved over to the right of the quotes with the arrow key, we'll add a space and a plus, so shift and equals, for me at least, and then we're gonna do time dot time. And then I'll go to the end and add a semicolon. So take a look at this line. There's a little bit there going on. You wanna make sure that it's copied exactly as I have it. Debug.log, open parentheses, then open quotation marks. It's a double quotes, updated at. And then we have a closing quotation marks and then plus and then time with a capital T dot time with a lower t case T. Very important that they all match. Next, we're gonna press Control S and save to get rid of that little star so that our changes to our file have happened. You're gonna find that throughout the process of building games, you constantly forget to save your file and then wonder why things don't work. Just make sure that you go back in here and hit Control S. Now I'll minimize the window for our code editor, go back into Unity. And if I press play right now, what do you expect's gonna happen? Think about it for a second. Let's click on the console window, press play and think what's gonna happen. See what happens. We can see in the console window, nothing seems to be happening. There's nothing appearing down here. We're not getting a log message like we just written out. So how do we get that message to appear? Let's stop playing, go back to the project view, and let's go select our alien blue front, which is actually our player character that we have. What we need to do is add our player script to the character or to this game object. Until it's added to the game object, it doesn't exist in the world and it won't do anything. So we can write a script. If the script isn't actually used or referenced in our game, it won't do anything, in, well, at least until we use it or reference it in our game. So to do that, we can do well, a couple different things. We can hit the add component op button, and then we can go down to scripts and then find player. That works perfectly fine, that'll add it right on. I can right click and remove it though, because I want to show you one other way to do it. I can take this player script, click, and drag it on and also assign it that way. And if you just single click, it'll select it and that won't work. You actually have to go back over here, click on your alien, click and drag and hold it and drop it onto there. But look, now I've added two players. That's a problem too. I don't want two of them, so I'll right click and remove the second one. Now I'll save my scene so we get rid of that star, press the play button, and we should see our console start to log out our message that we've written. Let's see, go to console, update it at, and look at these numbers here. The numbers are actually the amount of time that's passed since the game started. So updated at 10 seconds in, 11 seconds in, 12 seconds in, and so on. Let's stop playing now. Now let's go to Plastic SCM and commit our changes. So we've got our new player script and our level updated. We'll say that we've added the player script and attached it in level one. And we'll check in our changes. Hit save to make sure that my level is saved. Oh, and if we get that error, you can just hit that check in button again. There we go.